Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here. Time for another Patreon-sponsored Blind Reaction. And this one comes to you courtesy of Dark Griffin, who has requested that I react to what Malty's trials should have been like, the Queen's Dark Nature, Shield Hero Episode 21 cut content by Anna News. So, yeah, we're doing another one of these. I think I reacted to what was cut from Shield Hero Episode 1 uh, before, and it was pretty interesting. And now we're skipping ahead to episode 21, and uh, that's another one where I got a lot of comments telling me that it was different in the source, in the light novel. Uh, things were a bit different, and uh, I don't remember exactly how, because it has been a while uh, since I've seen Shield Hero, though I am going to finally finish season one next week. Uh, series reactions are going to resume, and next week, Shield Hero season one will uh, be finished on this channel, and then after that, my hero is going to start back up, and uh, that'll be cool. And uh, I think season two is uh, well on its way, so uh, we'll get to that eventually. Because I've been having a lot of fun with the series, even though I mean it's taken me forever. I think this anime, just the first season of it, <laughs> it's taken like a year. Uh, but um, that's just because of all the stupid, all my hiatuses and just. All that nonsense and uh, having to slow it down so much for a while. But um, that's all beside the point. Anyway, this this should be interesting. I, I mean, you guys did tell me about this stuff, I'm pretty sure, back when I watched the episode. But luckily, I suppose, uh, I've kind of forgotten exactly how things were different in, uh, in your comments. So uh, this should be uh, this should be kind of enlightening. So let's go ahead and start it and see what we got. Here we go. Did you know that the queen is actually kind of crazy? I mean, Kay. not like all the time, but for most of what should have happened in episode 2. I mean, she did she seem really like made it seem that way. She did seem like she really was going to kill them After for most of it. See what the anime had left out, her borderline unstable attitude is Which I would have been fine with. Justified. I mean, yeah, sure, the trial as we saw in the anime was quite satisfying. But some yeah. of the things that the queen I mean, I think I would have been more satisfied if uh king, if mine actually died, but in ways that for a second I thought I was reading Overlord. <laughs> so let's see what this queen is really like as we go through all the events that was skipped from episode 21. Let's begin. Episode 21, Naofumi's Triumphant Return, covering chapter 11 from volume 4 of the light novel and chapter 30 to 32 from the manga. Two days had gone by since Naofumi passed out after the battle. He was carried to a specialized treatment facility located in a town near the castle. You see, aside from his physical wounds, Naofumi was cursed by the blood sacrifice, hmm. and no amount of medicine or magic could heal him. Naofumi opened his stats to check what was up, and it showed that all of his attributes other than defense had dropped by 30%. The only way to recover those lost stats was to make a full recovery, which the doctors estimated would take about a month. This meant that he wouldn't be in his best shape once the next wave came around, something that Naofumi wasn't very fond of. The queen then entered the room, and although she was hiding her face behind her fan, she was quite visibly angry. Furious, even. With all this anger pointed towards mine and the king for doing what they did while she was away. Yeah, well that's so much completely so that fair. says she saw her tearing up their portraits and burning them to ash. The queen even had her shadows carry around extra portraits just so that she could use them as target practice when she felt the need <laughs> okay, to Okay, that might be a bit... But that a bit much, but... Her rage. It was like the betrayal of her own family had made her I mean, it is her own family. Then, in so a way I can... that seemed borderline deranged, she told Naofumi that she wanted to see kind of see twisted in fear. Kind of see where she's coming she from. Was harboring some very intense emotions, which <laughs> also made it apparent that she was only telling the truth. Because of this, he decides that he could trust her for now, and by her request, proceeds to accompany her back to the castle. Upon entering the throne room, both mine and the king were there. At first, the king was shocked to see the queen with the shield hero, finding it so unbelievable that he even attempted to convince the soldiers that she was an imposter. Let's just say that that comment didn't pass by the queen very well. She imposed yeah. the king in ice. Then yeah, that's only gonna make things worse. Across the face several times, <laughs> okay. all while scolding him for not Frieza? listening to her orders while she was away, stating how she trusted him to take care of the kingdom in her absence. Yet during these crucial times of world crisis. He put his own selfish desires ahead of the country's. Every time the king would try to get a word in, she'd just slap him again, not wanting to hear any excuses. Now, you may think that this was a bit excessive based on how the queen was portrayed in the anime. But not really. We're actually just getting started. 
The queen focused her attention towards mine next. Mine tried to convince her mother that Naofumi did what he was accused of. The thing is, even if he did, the queen didn't seem to care. She was already aware that Mine had been doing it with Motoyasu, so she didn't see why it mattered if it was with Naofumi. In fact, the queen actually said that if Mine did in fact have some sort of relationship with the shield hero, then she probably could have saved her from her current situation. When Naofumi heard this, he could only cringe at the thought. Hmm. The queen then goes on to say that it's a fair argument, though. <laughs> kind of referring to the fact that because Melty and now Fumi are acquaintances, they could still potentially end up in a relationship together. Now, everyone, including now Fumi, was a bit confused by the statement because Melty was still just this little girl. Yeah. Now Fumi really didn't want to be known I mean, as the guy with the lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> After thinking, maybe about she's it, talking about the far future. Start to make a eight years sense. from now. Remember, Silver like, was an enemy to Melmar. But they also worshipped the shield hero. I mean, it's so still weird, but the royal line of Melromark kind of adopted now how it goes with royal families. Through, say a marriage with Melty, Melromark <laughs> would then become this holy country in the eyes of Siltbelt, meaning the whole marriage would be this political move to improve relations between the two nations and hopefully eventually bring the two together as allies. Of course, Melty had no intentions of being used as a political pawn. So, with a red face, she quickly said no to all of her mother's requests. Knowing that Melty was just being shy, her mother simply tells her that she just needs to try her best. Melty also couldn't help but feel a little dejected when Naofumi further dismissed her mother's statements as absurd. <laughs> this eased a bit of the tension. I mean, that makes sense too. At least the other heroes now knew that Naofumi wasn't a total creep. However, the queen seemed rather insistent on Melty bearing Naofumi's child in a way that seemed as if she wouldn't let him return to Earth unless he did. But that may just have been Naofumi jumping to conclusions. The Queen then continues to berate Mine, stating how she knows all about her nasty habits of taking advantage of others, also demanding to know the truth of the entire situation. But Mine showed no signs of admitting to her lies, so the Queen had no choice but to bring out the tools to administer a slave seal. Meanwhile, Motoyasu was growing restless as he watched this person he trusted so much be held down on the ground and put through this pain. <laughs> he raised his spear as if he was about to prep an attack, but now Fumi casted Shield Prison and he kept him inside of it until the skill timed out, giving the Royal Guard enough time to implant the seal. Now, this slave seal was slightly different. It's a more powerful iteration of the one that Raptalia has. Rather than staying as a permanent mark on the skin, it'll disappear when not in use and only reappear when it's punishing the host. Hmm. So when the first question was asked, Mine tried to lie, saying that everything that Naofumi did was true. This caused the seal to appear and activate itself, inflicting intense bits of pain to Mine. Only after admitting the truth did the seal disappear again. Motoyasu still being the idiot he is, <laughs> he that this method was just to force words out of Mine's mouth. He didn't think Complete that idiot. what she was saying was the truth. That's why in order to make sure that no one would have any misconceptions regarding the outcome of this trial, Mine was temporarily registered as Motoyasu's slave. It made the information regarding how slave seals work appear in his built-in HUD, allowing him to understand that what was happening was in fact the truth. Everything from the forest fires to her plot to remove Melty from the line of succession was revealed to the people. And slowly but surely, now Fumi's name was being cleared. But even with all this evidence, Motoyasu still refused to believe it. He even continued to blame Naofumi, but that's either how faithful he is to his friends or just how dense he is. The king's trial came up, but he didn't really have much to say other than that everything was the shield hero's fault, which didn't really matter anyway since the queen had already heard enough. Now, throughout the entire trial, Naofumi was growing anxious. Neither mine nor the king were going to apologize. And though that was frustrating to him, what was more frustrating was being in the same room as them. Even being in the castle in general was an overall sour experience. He just didn't want to be there. Understandable. Things did become a bit more entertaining though when the queen finally delivered her verdict. She first disowned them from their royal status, stating how they were both unfit to have such power, following it up by giving context to the gravity of their actions. You see, every nation was suffering heavy losses from the waves. So the kings and queens of each of them agreed to a single meeting to discuss this crisis, leading to the decision that each major nation would agree to set aside their differences and summon one hero at a time, with Melromark being the last. But by the time they had come to that agreement, Melromark had already summoned all of the heroes for themselves, 
And of course, every other nation wasn't very happy about this. <laughs> yeah, it resulted yeah. In the poor diplomatic relations that we see today. This made the other heroes question why the queen would leave such an irresponsible person in charge of an entire country. But we find out that the king wasn't her first choice. She actually had someone that she trusted as her right hand. Pretty much what we would know as the hand of the queen. And it was this person who was supposed to take care of the kingdom in her absence. Now, the reason this person was so trusted by the queen was because his values aligned very closely with hers. He was a noble well, this guy. who spent a lot of time okay. earning the trust of the demi-human. I mean, he actually does but seem very trustworthy, so that hit, makes sense. He gave his life protecting them. You see, this noble was committed to a larger plan to improve relations between Melromark and Siltfeld. If Melromark showed that they were trying to create equality between humans and demi-humans, then Siltfeld would likely do the same. And for a while, it actually worked. At least until this noble died and everything fell apart. Because so the, not this guy, because he's still alive. Born, the king even went and ordered the demolition Keep of the demi-human district that was supposed to be protected by Melromark. And yeah, that was Raftalia's district. Meaning, Raftalia's entire tragic backstory was a direct result of the king's orders. Now, okay. the queen just couldn't believe that despite her true enemy being the church, that the king did almost the same amount of damage. She slapped the king for every wrong action she could list, and it seemed like that list went on forever. <laughs> Why the queen seemed so unstable began to make more sense. Yeah, I mean, now, it's all even began to sympathize with pretty her. justified. I mean, everyone she had trusted I mean, the lack of stability is actually not so trustworthy to begin with. More because it's her family, I think. She now had to carry the entire country's weight and all of its problems by herself. Like, I mean, I think she knows they deserve the to die. <laughs> the queen made was that the Church of the Three Heroes was now a heretical religion. And the only religion that Melromark would now follow was the Church of the Four Holy Heroes, which was one that actually already existed, but not followed due to the Three Heroes Church being so deeply rooted into the foundation of Melromark's creation. As it would turn out, this religion had put a lot of funding towards forming Melromark into the kingdom that we see today, thus why it had so much influence. Now, the queen wasn't done there. There was still much more punishment to dole out. She proceeds to hand mine a piece of paper, which we soon find out to be a bill of all the money that Mine owed the kingdom. It would seem that during her mother's absence, Mine had assumed that all of the kingdom's assets were hers for the taking. This included yes, everything and everything. Yes, that's a fair assumption to make. To totally mine. And the bill accounted for all of it, even including the cost of burning down the forest. Attempted regicide. So let's just say that the total amount Bingo. was extravagant. <laughs> I didn't even see that one at first. Second sentence. <laughs> in order to pay all of this back, she would have to work as a slave until she was no longer in debt. And if she didn't want to work as a slave, then she'd have to contribute to the country some other way. This meant joining the heroes to fight the waves on the front lines. And that didn't only apply to mine. The king also either had to join the front lines or abandon all responsibilities and become an adventurer. Both didn't seem to like the idea since they both immediately began to beg for forgiveness. Something that the queen was definitely short of right now. She then comes up with an idea and gives Naofumi the right to decide their next punishment. Mine scurried to Naofumi's feet and began to beg. But when she <sighs> said his name, she made a great oh God, that and face is... it, which really triggered Naofumi. And I mean, that face really is made terrible. So the I mean, is it what, is she, is it what she said or that, that face that triggered him? Penalty. He didn't even think about it. He subconsciously hated these two so much that it was almost like a natural response. It's because deep down, he knew that death would be the only way to erase all the hatred that he bears. Even the queen, Ren and Itsuki, agreed that this punishment was a fitting one, especially given how much they had screwed over Melomark at an international level. But simply executing them was too plain of a death for the queen. She wanted to give them hope, make them feel that they had secured their freedom, then torture and execute them after. Or okay. maybe give them simple jobs and keep them around until they work themselves to death. Now Fumi and the queen seemed to really like this idea of having them as pets and domesticating them to death. Though, considering that she was putting so much thought into such gruesome ways of disposing her own family members, now Fumi couldn't help but think that maybe it was the queen who was the darkest person in the country. In actuality, these were just suggestions, simply words that embodied the emotions that she was feeling at that time. She didn't actually want them to die. Yeah. It was only to show now Fumi that he could literally ask for anything and the queen would follow through with it. Now Fumi That's kind of similar to... Uh... That oh, wow. way their deaths would send a powerful message to anyone who would try to oppose them in the future. Normally, the queen would have agreed, but crucifying the king wouldn't go well with the other nations. You see, despite how he currently is, in the past, 
many of his deeds as the kingdom strategist gained him recognition all over the world. And to this day, many people still respect him. So much so that if they were to kill him in such a public manner like that, then that could go as far as to start a war. Now Fumi got the point. The king was too famous to kill. He recalled Melty's stories of him having proven himself time and time again in battle as a master strategist. So it made sense Bullish. why he had so many allies and why killing him wasn't the best course of action. So instead, now Fumi suggested making them suffer. Perhaps ripping off their hands and feet would oh. be a good start. This only made mine grovel at his feet some more. She was <laughs> Are we sure? Non-stop. Are we sure now Fumi isn't the darkest one in the room? When she finally did, though, she made such a hypocritical statement that everyone in the room could do nothing but just look on in shock. She had begged now Fumi to not do anything as foolish as look for revenge, stating how revenge only breeds further revenge. Now, the fact that she could even say something like that given the situation that she was in just absolutely floored now Fumi. It's what spurred the idea for their final punishment. Mine would have to become an adventurer and have her name changed to Whore. Likewise, the king would be known as Trash and have to become a soldier. So, to ensure that they understood their new non-royal positions, the queen forced them to their knees so that Naofumi's next request could be met. It was an old one that he had put forth back at the end of the third wave. Remember when he demanded that the king crawl on his knees? Well, that's what Naofumi wanted, and that's what he got. Shadows and knights surrounded both whore and trash, and forced <laughs> them to their knees with their heads touching the ground. This was what Naofumi wanted to see. He felt great, especially since they seemed to be in so much anguish just kneeling down like that. It was as if this one act was the most humiliating thing that they'd ever done in their entire lives. For whatever reason, they just couldn't swallow their pride and humbly apologize. They began to struggle and scream with all their might. I mean, it looked as if it brought them so much discomfort that it made Ren and Itsuki wonder if now Fumi was going too far. Their state of panic was just so unsightly that no one really wanted to look at it. Now Fumi was the only one that seemed to be enjoying it. Even Melty and Raftalia seemed to be disappointed by now Fumi's actions. Now Fumi didn't really care though. He enjoyed the show while it lasted, and after that was finished, everyone except for the queen and now Fumi's party were escorted out of the throne room. The queen still had stuff that she wanted to discuss information that needed to be shared as well as stuff that she wanted to find out. First was an explanation as to why everything turned out the way it did. It all comes back to Siltfelt and Malremark. These two are like water and oil, complete opposites. Malremark, a mainly human society, has demi-human slaves and follows the Church of the Three Heroes. On the other hand, Siltfelt is a demi-human society oh. with human slaves and Who? they follow the Church of the Shield. Who is the that? The religions diverged from the original Church of the Four Heroes. Are we and meeting that character soon? In faith along with some built-in discrimination that led to the ongoing conflicts between the two nations. It essentially meant that now Fumi was summoned to Suddenly right excited for season two. two. I mean, it made sense why the king hated him now. He was the saint of Malremark's rival nation. And because the king must have fought countless wars wow. against them, it's no wonder he despised their most iconic figure. Now Fumi even bet that to the knowledgeable people of Malremark, the shield hero was probably taught to be seen as a demon. And it's likely that the king wanted to make it so that the entire nation saw it that way. As for why the king or the church just didn't kill Now Fumi right away, well, apparently they were waiting for the other heroes to do it on their own accord. But they had to wait until the other heroes became strong enough to do so. However, by that point, the church began doubting their abilities to maintain control which led to the mess of events from the last few episodes. That whole time though, the queen was busy with international negotiations trying to avert going to war with literally everyone. It was only after this that she could return home. Of course, it wasn't the greatest news since oh, yeah, this scene. had come into <laughs> this amazing scene. replica. Now Fumi was told <laughs> that they were lucky that the replica only carried a quarter of the power of the originals. This meant that all the heroes could become four times stronger than how the priest was. They just needed enough time. Finally, the queen gets to asking if now Fumi will still support her nation. As much as now Fumi wanted to say goodbye and leave, he couldn't bring himself to it because of his promise to Pretoria. The queen did know that now Fumi was hesitant, so she decides to tell him what will happen if he goes to Siltveld. First, the princesses will demand an audience. Then, the female demi-humans will make a harem around him. Now, I mean, as unlikely as this will sound, sounds now pretty Fumi good to me. Turned off by the idea. Not because it didn't seem like a good time, but because he still wouldn't be able to trust any woman that easily, especially those who would try to control or take advantage of him. That was something that he was- Fair enough. <laughs> the second thing that would happen would be that Siltfeld would literally give him anything that he wished for. 
Should he demand an invasion of Malramark, then all of them would gladly march to their deaths. But that aspect could be taken a bit too far. Siltbelt was already known as a rather extreme country, and it's because of this that Naofumi came to the conclusion that if he went, it would be either heaven or hell. Even so, that off chance it would be hell was still better than being here. The queen saw that she had still not yet swayed Naofumi's mind, so as a final act of reverence, she kneeled down and bowed her head before him. Everyone including Philo recognized the significance of this action. Here we had the highest authority of all of Melramark, pleading on her knees for the shield hero to stay, going so far as to offer her own life and name if it meant soothing his anger. This just went to show that the entire future of Melramark relied solely on Naofumi. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the queen was merely a figurehead. Naofumi knew he had a bigger role to play, so he felt that this one time he could trust her. After all, her shadows did save him once before, I mean, and if he did continue to doubt everyone, then he wouldn't yeah. be able to move forward. He would never be. She able seems to pretty trustworthy to me, as far as there was no reason to keep <laughs> characters in this show go. Sure, he still had many, but if he could avoid them whenever possible, then that would be a good step in the right direction. So it was with this decision that Naofumi had now made a powerful ally, and he began to think that perhaps things might start to get better. As he looked around the room at each of his companions, the friends he made on this long journey, he thought, no, things will get better. And that's that. Episode 21 with all of the gaps filled in. Not that there were very many, but I think it was good to show this kind of crazed side of the queen that the anime left out. Personally, I think it would have done well to help develop her character a little bit more. I mean, it's not like they didn't have time either, considering that there were still four episodes remaining in the season. But it is what it is. Now you know for when season 2 and 3 come out, which, if you haven't heard, has been confirmed to be in production. Yeah, yeah. So that means much, much more cut content, and perhaps finally some who is or how strong is videos. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao. Alright, well there we go. Um, I mean, for what he said, I don't even think she was that crazed. I, I actually think the episode... Though it might have changed a few things and uh, cut a few things, I think it got the point across fairly well when you consider uh, consider it all. I mean, maybe um, maybe she comes across as a little softer, a little more rational, but um, I mean, she still was, or she still seemed at least, fully on board for killing them and just executing them right in public, which apparently is something, an option they, uh, uh, in the source, they didn't even, uh, fully get that far with, um, because of the king. Um, so, um, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I guess because the light novel has more room to fully explain the politics uh, and you fully understand how, uh, just how much the king screwed up. I mean, how much, how much Malty screwed up is, I mean, immediately appar apparent just how awful she is. That comes across completely in every aspect of the show. But the king, um, I don't think the gravity of his decisions is quite as apparent. So... Maybe that's why they didn't make her go so far with it. Because when it, it really have it explained, then, I mean, she doesn't really seem crazy to me, honestly. It seems like she's pretty, uh, pretty justified in, uh, that bit of just, uh, explosive anger and, uh, just hurt, betrayed rage that she apparently has. Um, because, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he really screwed up everything for her, and just the situation got out of hand, and uh, just everything wrong <laughs> happened. And um, in a lot of ways, hearing this, I mean, what he did is probably worse than what Multi did, which is crazy to even think about, but uh, just how, uh, how much things got screwed up because I, I, I didn't know there was another guy who uh which that part of the video was admittedly confusing because they, they, they kept showing the guy that we met earlier uh but then they were alluding to some shadow as well who 
Uh, apparently it died, so uh, it's not that guy, I guess. But um, I don't know. That was that was weird. Um, but um, yeah, the queen had a plan. She trusted someone else, and uh, that someone else uh, ended up not being there. So <laughs> the king just ended up being the one to make the decisions and he made a bunch of bad ones and uh, just not good so um, yeah I, I think the queen is really just fairly justified in all of this I mean and he, yeah apparently she like threw out suggestions of torture but um, I mean that's kind of a, a thing just throwing out suggestions, just uh, explaining just uh, how far she's willing to go, depending on what Naofumi wants. I, I, I kind of... Uh, I haven't read the light novel or whatever, but... <laughs> I mean, I can kind of, from how he explained it, understand that that's what she was doing, probably. Um, but, um... Yeah, at the end of the day, um, it's still gotta be hard for her. I think she's still... Even with what we explained in this video, I think she still didn't really want to go so far. I mean, that's why uh, I think her uh, suggestion of like making them slaves was uh, the one that we kind of uh, really stuck with. Um, so it's, uh, in the end, kind of similar to what the anime showed. Uh, I think the anime maybe just cut corners just uh, because it is harder to explain the gravity of the situation in some aspects um, and also because of time but um, I think the anime still constructed a fairly satisfying scene though I mean honestly I would have been happier seeing them die <laughs> that's just me maybe I'm the dark one <laughs> but uh, I mean god Malty is like the worst like the worst for sure ugh I don't know, but uh, <laughs> fun video, and it actually has me excited. I'm going to be finishing season one of, of Shield Hero next week. Um, finally, going to be uh, capping that off so I can move on to something else. And uh, this has me kind of actually rather excited and ready to jump back in and uh, at least enjoy the last two episodes of season one. <laughs> Which, when does season two start? I don't know if we have a date on that finally, do we? I should check that real quick. <sighs> Do we know when it's coming out? Let's see. No, it just says 2021, so we don't have a date. Probably, if I was going to guess, uh, maybe the spring season? I don't know. I mean, that just sounds about right. Maybe maybe the winter season. Um, I guess we'll find out. I mean, if it was winter season, they'd probably have announced it already. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Whatever the case, I'm excited for season two. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I enjoyed this video. Hope you liked the reaction. Let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.